Hello everyone, this is Damien and we're uh, going to be talking a bit more about loops right now. Uh, this is going to be episode number 10, I believe, of our Intro to Java lessons. So, let's get going on that. Um, we're going to talk about for loops today, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about nested loops, and see where we can get to. So. Let's start off by explaining what a for loop is. So you'll notice in the last video I, I made a variable just for counters. So let's say I did something like int i equals 0. Then I did while i is less than 10, you know, and then I do like a system.out.println hello world. So something like that would just print out, well, assuming now that I didn't put in that the I++, this would actually print out infinitely until it would cause a stack overflow. Or it would print out infinitely if Java's good enough about handling its own memory. That's called an infinite loop. Uh, those happen sometimes when you're new to programming. Um, <clears throat> so we put in the I++. And so what we've basically done is we've declared a variable, we've incremented the variable, and we've done something inside the loop. So we do that, prints out 10, <clears throat> 10 hello worlds. And so it's, it's predictable, but it sort of seems excessive that I have to make my own variable if I'm only going to use it right here. And that I have to put this I++ in the loop and that all I'm doing here is testing for a condition. So that's where for loops come into play. So here's here's how for loop looks. It starts off with the word for, and then the first part is typically called uh, initialization. So you can initialize a variable here, or you can take a variable and set it equal to something. So in my case, I'll do int i equals zero, and then a semicolon. And then I'll do i is less than 10, semicolon, i++. plus plus. So there's three parts to this for loop. So there's initialization, which is this first part, where we take a variable that doesn't exist, or we take an existing variable and we set it. Again, we don't need to do that, but it's something we can do. We say i is less than 10. That's what's known as the conditional. So when that statement becomes false, meaning i is uh, greater than or equal to 10, uh, actually, no, when it is greater than 10, uh, that will no longer be true. Uh, no, when it is greater than or equal to 10, it will no longer be less than 10. Sorry about that. My bad. And this last part is called the iterator, meaning that this should somehow usually correlate to your uh, to your condition. So this last part should correlate to your condition, meaning if this last part runs for long enough, if that I++ keeps making I go up, eventually your condition should become false. So your loop will exit. So from there, we'll simply do a system.out.println and do a hello world. and align that. And so we run that and immediately all of our hello worlds are back again. So this one little statement saves us a few lines of code and it just makes it more compact and easy to read. So <clears throat> let's do a, a quick little experiment, I suppose. And so this experiment was actually uh, my, final, uh, my final project, which was remarkably easy when I was a, uh, a first year student in computer science taking C++. So what the project was, was to print out, and I'm just going to do a, a block quote here, just like this. My teacher wanted something to print out that looked like this. Uh, wow, I didn't even have enough lines for that, geez. So he wanted to print out something that looked like this. Let me get that onto its own line. Close enough. Okay. 
one, two, and one. So sort of this uh, a descending pyramid of numbers, right? So, by the way, this is a block quote. It's the same as adding a, a slash slash to a line, except you only have to do one, and then each line after you just put a star. Um, so what we're trying to print out is just this one, two, or one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then back down from there. So here's how we're going to do it. Instead, um, actually, no, we can, we can make I like that. But this is going to get into what's called nested loops, meaning we need a loop inside of a loop to do this. So nested loops. Loop inside of a loop. And so it's a fairly simple concept, but it can get very distressing when you're first learning it. So I'm going to kind of blaze through this for concerns of time. Um, but I want you guys to try testing this out. There's a lot of ways that you can easily use nested loops. Uh, this is just one of them for just making stupid output stuff, but there's a lot of times, uh, and again, in the future, we're going to be going over some of these. Um, you know, I'm just going to keep that line, whatever. Um, where we'll be going over, you know, running a nested loop. So just be aware that they exist and try to pick up what you can from this. So what we're going to do here is instead of making uh, an i here, we're going to make it outside of the loop. So we're going to go int i equals 0, j equals 0. So i and j are actually, you know what, I'm going to make it a little easier for you guys. We'll do outer, uh, outer loop and j will be inner loop. So in this case, we can just say outer loop equals zero. Alternatively, if we didn't want that there, we could just leave it empty. Um, so if we wanted to, we could just leave this first part empty and just have a semicolon right there. Uh, I'm going to keep it like that because it, just, it looks right to me. Um, so yeah, that's all. And then outer loop plus plus and so then our inner loop is going to need to be incremented as well so here's how we're going to do this we're going to get rid of that actually we're going to get rid of this whole statement and then we're going to do four uh, inner loop equals zero inner loop is less than outer loop outer loop plus plus and so then all we're going to do is do a system dot out dot uh, println and we're going to simply output outer loop and so when we do this just like that if we give this a run, we're going to see what this produces. And if I recall, this should be 0 through 4. Uh, oh, nope, actually it's not because I forgot to, to do a little uh, statement here. So you'll notice that I've created myself uh, a bit of a monster here because I confused my inner loop and my outer loop. And I was incrementing my outer loop. So my inner loop ran infinitely. So now I give this another save. And you'll notice that at this point it's gone 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4. And that's close to right, but that's not quite what I'm looking for. So again, I confuse my outer and inner loop right here. I'm so much better when I'm using i and j because that's how I think of it in my head. Um, so this is a little off for me. So now when I use this, we get 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're kind of working in the right direction, but it's still not quite what we want. So a rule of thumb when you're working with, uh, with Java or any other language like that is if you're trying to run something the number of times where it's equal to something else. So say we're trying to run this five times. We start at zero and we make it less than five. 
However, if we want to start at 1, which would make sense because seeing 0 here isn't what we want, we want to start at 1, you do it less than or equal to, which will make it run one additional time. So here we run it and we see 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and now we're getting close to being where we want it to be. So if we change this to uh, 1 and less than or equal to, we kind of end up with what we want, but we're still having this problem where it's printing out on a bunch of different lines. And so when we look at our system.out.println, println means print each thing on a different line. And so we'll get rid of the println and replace it with a print. And so now our problem is that it's all on one line. So what we really need here is a blank line. So we're going to go ahead and type system.out.println and just leave it blank. And so that means whenever we exit outside of this inner loop back to the outer loop, it will add in a blank line. And so now when we run that, we're noticing that we do have the 1 through 5 correct. So now all we need to do is do the exact opposite. So we reverse that. So now we're going to take 4 uh, outer loop and again, we can just put a, a semicolon there or we can leave it blank. I'm just going to leave it blank this time. And we're going to do outer loop is greater than zero. Why is that? Outer loop plus plus. Okay, and so it's no longer giving me any warnings or anything. We're going to do the same thing here and we're going to say four inner loop equals 1, inner loop is less than or equal to outer loop, inner loop plus plus. I hope you guys know how hard it is for me to use these variable names. Oh, this is killing me. So we'll do the same exact thing here. The only thing we've changed is the uh, is the way that the outer loop is counting. So we started with the outer loop variable where it ended here. So it should have ended at five and now we're counting from five down to zero. I think that that needs to be less than or equal to. So we're going to simply print out the value of inner loop in here. And then we're simply going to put a new line again as we did above uh, just to show that we you know, want this on separate lines. So now we're going to give this a run and oh my goodness, it would appear as though I've broken everything again. And so let's take a look at why. In this case, you'll notice that when I made this for loop, I made it increment when I wanted it to be decrementing because its exit value is zero. So in this case, we can change that plus plus to minus minus, which really means subtract one from outer loop each time through the loop. And so if we give that a save and give it another run, you'll notice that we go up to six, which isn't exactly what we want, but it's pretty close. So if we then go back up here and we can decide to change that to zero and go up to five, uh, sometimes playing around with this a little bit helps. Um, that means it will execute the same number of times. However, it will be uh, off by one still. Because you'll see that we only go up to five and we don't do five twice. So in this case, there's a lot of different ways that we can fix this. However, I'm going to leave that to you guys and this will be your second homework assignment. I want you guys to make it so this prints out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twice before printing out 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to be a very difficult homework. I know that I sort of rushed through this and I'm basically out of time as it stands now. Um, nested loops are a very difficult thing and I don't expect you guys to get this 100% yet. We're going to spend next video sort of reinforcing what we talked about here, so I hope that you guys will join me for this. If you have any questions, please post below. This will probably be the single hardest video in the beginner series. 
Thank you for your time. I'm Damien, and have a happy holiday.